Welcome to another video in Galway Film Centre's Guide to Virtual Production. Today is all about setting up your first project and having it ready for a virtual production workflow. We'll be showing the Steam Viewer Room setup, how to create your first project, and how to migrate scenes from the Unreal Engine 4 marketplace into your project. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Galway Film Centre's previous videos and posts on virtual production to make sure you're up to speed. Before we even start to make our Unreal Engine 4 project, you'll want to complete a Steam Viewer room setup. So if you haven't already, we'll need to download Steam. So what you can do is just download Steam on the page. So it says install Steam. So after you install Steam, you'll have to create an account. So you see like this. So once you have it made, you can log in. And before you do this, you'll want to make sure that you have your headset plugged in because it's when you log in here and once you launch it, it'll detect your headset and it'll prompt for you to install the VR. It'll be up in this right hand corner. So you can start Steam VR through that. Or you can right click down here in Steam, launch Steam VR. And if you haven't already, you won't be seeing this. You'll be prompted to do a room setup. So if you ever want to redo your room setup again, when you're in Steam VR, right click on that and you hit room setup. And so at this point, we'll be using our controller to set up the room. This room setup is important. And if you can avoid redoing it, that is ideal. Of course, there may be times you need to redo it. And it just means that you may need to make small adjustments to your project to accommodate it. For example, we've had issues in the past where after some time, Steam VR was getting the wrong height for a floor. So we needed to do a quick redo of the room setup so that it was accurate again. So as you can see now, we have all our base stations recognized and our two trackers, which means we're ready to start our project. So what you'll need to do is go into the Epic Games launcher, minus this for now, and then Unreal Engine. And then Library is where you see all of your items. So we'll be using Unreal Engine 4.25.3. So this is the version we're using. They're now in 4.26. This is the newer ones. That is OK. So there are some plugins you might want to install as well. So if you look at installed plugins, you can scroll down here. And for us, because we're using Blackmagic and Aja, we need to install the Aja media player and the Blackmagic design media player. So it's good to have both of those installed. And once you have that, we can go set current. And then in the top right corner, we can launch. This will just take a moment, as you'll see. So you'll see this window pop up. And if you've used any projects before, they'll pop up here. So sometimes it's a quick way to see your previous projects. And if not, we can go back. And we'll want to go into film, television, and live events. So we can go next. Virtual production, next. We're going to have no starter content and ray tracing disabled. So now you want to choose where you'll save it and what you want to name it as well. So we're going to go with demo getting started. And then simply create project. And just give it some time, and it'll load in for you. Once you load into your project, it'll look something like this. The tabs might be a bit different just because this is the layout I like, and I can show you how you open some of them now. Straight away, you can see we have a time code coming in that's just automatically created by Unreal Engine. So for now, this is fine. So to open these windows, you'll see your take recorder, your sequencer, our levels, our layers, all of which we have open, our composure. And that should be all the ones we need to add in addition for now. And then this is the layout I'll be using. So to move anything, you're just dragging and dropping as needs be. So our content browser is probably our core spot. And this is the level we'll be brought into when we use a virtual production template. So what we'll be doing is creating a new level. So it's good habit to create certain folders just to be organized. So we'll call this maps and levels. No spaces, does not matter. 
can hop in there. And right click and create a new level. And double click to load into it. And what you can do as well is go into the project settings at this point, and you'll see maps and modes. And we can change this to be the level we want. So here you can see VP main, which is our level, and you can choose this as well. So all this does is that when you load your project, you'll automatically be brought into the level you want instead of being brought to that example level they gave you. So as you can see, there's no lights, there's no nothing in here right now. So that's what we want to get in first of all. So we'll drag in a directional light. Dragging in a sky atmosphere. Exponential fog. Now you can see we can see something, which is great. Go back to lights. And that is all we need for now. So what we can do as well is drop in a plane just so we have a basis for a floor. Might do a cube and set the location down here to zero. We can hit or to scale. Let's drag it out. Drag it out. And drag it out. And that will make for a decent floor for the moment. If you want to add a color to it, go to materials. We'll just turn it red for now. Build the lighting. And once that's done, we'll create a new folder. We'll call it lights. We can drag everything in here. We can rename this to floor. Now we have something we can use to start adding assets to. So now we have this basic scene set up. What you can do is just mess around with your lights and straight away you'll see that it, the difference it makes. You can add different colors. All it's going to affect right now is the only object we have in the scene. So what we want to do next is actually start adding assets into our scenes. So the best way to do this, and one of the great perks of Unreal Engine, is that they have this entire marketplace. So If you go back into your Epic Games Store and then into Unreal Engine and hit your marketplace, you can see a whole list of different assets you can buy but we're going to go into the free section. And you can just scroll through and see there's over 30 pages of assets here and just see what kind of objects you like. And every month they do free assets. So this month you can see there's this modular house that looks quite good already. And if we go back to your library, so you add anything to your cart, check it out, and it will go back to your library. And we scroll down and it's called the vault. And this is where all our assets we have are stored. So there are two different ways to get assets into your project. You can see by each of them, it either says create project or add to project. So add to project is a more straightforward version. So we might do a quick test here just to show how you go about doing that. So if we just take one, for example, we'll take this Edith Finch one here and we go add to project. We want to find our project. And what do we name it? Demo, isn't it? So, yeah. And you simply just hit add to project. Straight away, you'll see the size of it. This one isn't large, so it won't take too long. And we'll just let that download for a moment. So as you can see, it's fully in now. So we simply just go back to our project. And you can see a new folder has been created. So we can go in here. And what we want to see is if they have any maps and levels to give an example. So yeah, we can jump in here. Might take a moment to load. Which it will. We're going to save everything from the scene we were in. And straight away, you can see we're in a nice scene. 
So this one's more stylized, which probably doesn't suit virtual production. And all the lights aren't in yet. So when you add in a new scene, you'll get compiling shaders. And as you can see, this number is going to slowly go down. And once it's in, as you can see right here, we're missing some textures straight away. We don't have lights in. But that'll just take a bit, and you might just want to wait. This is only when you first create projects as well that this slowness tends to happen. And once it's created, this is all just stored. And next time you open a project, it's much quicker. So as you can see, all the textures are in. We have all the lights being visible. We have a nice shadow coming in from this window. And that's just an example of how you get a scene in. So what you can do as well is once you have your base level, you can create sub-levels. So if we go into our level window, you see persistent level. So what we can do now that this is in our project is go back into the content, into our core level. And if you want two levels at once, so this core level will eventually be all our virtual production content. So this is where we'll be storing all the cameras and anything that's related to virtual production. And then we can add other scenes to it so that we don't need to be recreating everything every time. So the way you do that is this is now the persistent level. You go in here. You want everything to be always loaded. And then you go here, add existing. And we just find that other level we want, which, for example, is here. And once it's all in, we can see it's located over here. We now have both in. And if we look away from a bit of a further point, we can turn it on and off as needs be. So as you can see, the scenes have different lighting. So what we'll do then is take all the lights that we put into the core scene out, because all we want is that virtual production content. And that's how you do that anytime you need to. So I'm just going to show you the other method we mentioned, which is migrating a project. So what we can do is you'll hit Create Project on whatever scene it is you want, if that's the option it gives you. You'll choose a location as you do. This one we need to rename to suit the formatting. And browse. Select Folder and Create. So same idea again, where it needs to download everything. I already have this one downloaded, so it should be a bit quicker. And then you're going to wait for that project to load in. So for now, we can close out our main project. Make sure you save everything as you go. We can simply wait for this one to be created. So it'll be in your folder once it is. And here we can see it. So yeah, we'll go to our location. And you can double click it. And it should open up for you. Again, it might take a few moments when it's first starting a new project. As you can see, the percentage going up. And straight away, we're brought into this scene. As you can see, this one's more realistic. And this is probably the one we're going to be using. So uh, what we could do is once this is in and you have a level you're happy with, we're in the content browser. Go subway train, go maps. This is demonstration, just to make sure. You'll see it up here. We're going to right click on the map we want to move or the level. We'll go to asset actions, and then we could just migrate. We're going to hit OK because we want everything. And then we're going to find where we saved our other project. This is our demo. And we just want content. And it has to be in the content. So we hit Select Folder, Copying Files. You see, successful. We can close this out because we're done with it and just open up our other project again. So when you have your project back open, we can go back into our content browser and just make sure it was migrated successfully. So we'll go in Subway. Maps, we'll see demonstration. We can go straight in, and straight away we can see our scene. And that is how you migrate a project. And straight away you can start messing around with all your assets. This is probably the best thing to do once you begin, is just messing around. Even if you go into the content browser, we should have just the meshes. So you can see all the props here. You can start with the blank scene and just play essentially until you're comfortable with all the controls is what I'd recommend doing.
When starting out, it can seem daunting to delve into the world that is virtual production. Our main online resources are as follows. So we use the official Unreal Engine 4 and Epic Games content, including the documentation, the virtual production field guides, and the online learning content. So these can be very good step-by-step -step guides that you can follow just to get a grasp of specific learnings, which is really important at the beginning. We also gather most of our research from the community. There is an active Facebook page and Discord page where members of the VP community are posting about their progress and learnings. It is here where we discovered most of the best advice for specific problems relating to virtual production. We'll be posting any links that we think are important in the description, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. By having a workable project created and the scene you like migrated into your Unreal Engine 4 project, we can begin focusing on the specific aspects of virtual production. Be sure to check out the links in the description for our list of resources of all aspects of virtual production. And as always, we'd like to take a moment to thank our partners, Green Talent Europe and Galway 2020 for helping us make this possible. In the next video, we'll be covering all aspects of cameras and virtual cameras, from actually creating your virtual camera to getting live footage into Unreal Engine 4. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for even more virtual production.